Hello everyone. On tonight's video, we're going to be discussing reselling uh, with one of the new rear sellers that I've been familiar with. Uh, she's a full-time mom, uh, runs her part-time business, reselling business out of her home. And she also does YouTube auctions, which are very popular these days, which we, we all resellers, we know about YouTube auctions. So uh, I wanted to bring her on and have her uh, talk about her reselling business and share, you know, with everything that's going on, you know, being a homeschool mom and the whole nine yards and just share her, her tips and tricks and how, how she runs her business. So uh, I just want to say hello to a couple of people and we'll get this party started. I want to thank my moderators for being here. We have Sharon and Michelle in the chat. Uh, the notification just went out there. Like I said before, there are no 30 minute advanced notifications. So it's going to take a minute or two for people to come into the chat. Uh, I see a couple of people that are in here. Hey, I'm a slipper. It's good to see you, buddy. Uh, Plus one thrifting is a friend of Stephanie's in the chat. So it's good to see you. Thank you for being here. So like I said, guys, if you're, if you're new to my channel, my name is Adam. My channel's name is Adam's Exploits. I typically every Wednesday have a reseller uh, interview where I interview other resellers and I have them bring their tips and their strategies and try to share it with us and help us make, make us better resellers and more profitable. Uh, that's what this channel is all about. So if you're a reseller or you're planning on getting a reselling, you're in the right place. So uh, like I said, I said hello to a few people. Let me bring on my guest and we'll have her introduce herself and we shall get this party started, I'd like to say. Okay. There she is. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Hi, Adam. Hi, everyone. Hello. Good to see you, Stephanie. Why don't you introduce yourself to the people that don't know you? All right. Well, I'm Stephanie and I have a YouTube channel, Thrifting Adventures, and it pretty much explains it all, <laughs> Thrifting Adventures. And I've had this channel, gosh, probably almost a year and a half. Um, I've been reselling and uh, thrifting for over 20 years, which seems like, you know, it's amazing to me. <laughs> it's like, I'm that old. <laughs> I started selling on eBay and selling in consignment stores and had antique spaces all over the Northwest um, back in the gosh, late nineties, early two thousands, back when it was, you know, dial up and floppy disks. And um, I even owned a store for nine years in Portland, Oregon with my mom is children's and women's uh, used uh, clothing and a little bit of toys and stuff. So I, now I pretty much sell almost everything like vintage decor, books, um, antiques, clothes, shoes, toys. Um, the couple of things I don't really sell are like tools and fishing gear and a lot of electronics because I find them boring, <laughs> but all the other stuff, oh, and jewelry. And then, um, so I sell on eBay. I have an antique space. Um, I sell at consignment shops, you know, on consignment. And then I just started, uh, gosh, several months ago, I'm not sure how many months ago, having YouTube live sales. Um, so that's the new phenomenon that's happening on YouTube. Um, I decided to talk to a couple of big YouTubers that have the sales. And I thought, this seems really fun because I like chatting with people. Um, I like kind of engaging with other YouTubers and it seemed like a fun way to sell my stuff, you know, other than just being by myself on eBay. <laughs> so yeah, it's been really successful and I kind of do that reselling on the side around, uh, you know, being a wife and a mom full time. So reselling is like my part time job and I make, you know, extra money for my family, which is, you know, feels good. and It's fun. So yeah, that's pretty much my whole bio in a nutshell. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't realize you had a brick and mortar. So you had a brick and mortar with, with your mother for a while? Yeah. Um, this was about six or seven years ago. We sold the store, um, which seems pretty amazing because now I know a lot of stores are struggling. Right. Um, because of the COVID and stuff. But yeah, we had it for nine years. It was pretty successful. It was in the heart of Portland, Oregon. And um, we just kind of... I don't know. My mom wanted to retire. We just kind of got burnt out on it, you know, with anything in life. And uh, we sold it and just, you know, kind of did our own things and stuff. I, I'm still reselling. I never wanted to stop reselling. I just wanted to do uh, something a little different than being back at a store, you know, several right. days a week. So, so, yeah. So you say basically, you're, I guess, I'm assuming you're doing one off the way you were talking, like you do, you know, uh, you, whatever you get, I mean, you don't really do volume as far as like multiple quantities of things or 
we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. I wanted to ask you if you do any re, uh, retail arbitrage or wholesale uh, arbitrage, wholesaling or uh, online arbitrage, if you do that as well. But so pretty much you do like one offs. That's kind of what you do. Yeah, I dabbled a little bit in the retail arbitrage for a okay. while, um, kind of dipped my toe into it. And I don't know, it wasn't really my thing. My my passion is finding kind of gently used items, treasures, antiques, you know, things like that. The retail arbitrage, I mean, it worked out sometimes, you know, going to the clearance section of Walmart or going to sales at Walgreens and stuff. But right. I don't, I didn't enjoy it that much and I want to enjoy what I'm doing. So I kind of quit doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the issue I had when I, when I first started, I wanted to get involved with Amazon and, uh, uh, when they involved with Amazon and doing retail arbitrage, and I found it was really, really sure. And then sometimes you would travel to like eight, ten stores to put on like 60, 70 miles. And I'm in an area yeah. that's pretty densely populated, so yeah. I would put on like 50, 60 miles in a day, and I'd be exhausted. It's like, well, I already found some candy and this, that, and the other. It's like, I'm gonna make any money. <laughs> it's like, I know, right? And then it's like, <laughs> and you, then you go to the Walmart clearance, and we say, well, I got this great deal at Walmart clearance. Like, go to mine. It's like, well, mine's only like 10 percent off. You got 50 percent off on yours. It's like, <laughs> really? Yeah, exactly. If you buy anything like with a date on, you got to worry about the date. And if you're buying candy or, or something that can melt, or you know, yeah. Max, you got to worry about shipping it. You know, when it's hot out, it's like so. So that's yeah. kind of how that's how kind of how I got involved with uh, with eBay. Um, and you got started with the clothing because with clothing, it you know readily available. Um, and then, like you said, you want to sell things that you're familiar with and that you find exciting. Yeah. So uh, you're a typical reseller. You're you you like the thrill of the hunt. Yes. Uh, you you want to go out to a thrift store, to a yard sale, or a garage sale? It's like, well, I got this thing for two dollars. I I can look on eBay app. I can sell this for a hundred dollars. Exactly. Yeah, it's the thrill of it. It's like a treasure hunt. You know, I don't exactly. see items anymore. I actually see dollar signs. Oh yeah, that's what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So yeah, um, I, I get kind of burned out with the with the retail arbitrage and all. Um, yeah. With everything that's been going on, obviously more people are doing online arbitrage. Yeah. They're looking for deals and whatnot and trying to buy it. And again, if you can buy quantities of things, uh, I know most of the resellers in the chat, they're your experienced resellers. So I want to also, you know, have my channel geared a little bit to the beginners and have them, you know, yeah. learn from us. Uh, so the thing is nice when you can buy quantities of something. So yeah. you can do one listing and then you list the quantity of something, especially if it's something that's um, uh, replenishable, as they call them, or replens, they call them on Amazon, but things like yes. some cosmetics. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't really do candles, but things like things that you could, you know, food products, yeah, uh, uh, health and beauty aids, that kind of stuff that people buy on a regular basis. Yeah, uh, and you, if you can get a deal on something and then just just sell it and keep you know keep changing the quantity. Um, um, the one thing you can do is what I've done. It's not retail arbitrage. Is buying on eBay like a wholesale, not wholesale, but like a lot of stuff. Yeah, like, 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 like a lot, a wholesale lot. Yep. Yeah, like a lot of jewelry and then sell them individual pieces. And I've done that before on eBay. Like I'll buy a lot of, you know, brooches because people don't want to list them individually for a discount. And then I'll resell them on eBay or my YouTube live sales. So there's a little bit of that going on. Right. Well, let me see if my if my I want to I want to share this comment. I told you I was having problems with my Streamyard chat. Let me see if it's okay. Working. See if it's working here. I might be able to. Oh, look, um, I reloaded. Okay, let's see here. Am I not able to see chats? Yeah, like I told, like I told you, I oh, yeah. but I, I my mind frozen, but it, but it's back now. My Streamyard chat. Oh, okay. So I like I like sharing people's comments when they make an entry of comments. It's, you can see that actually now on the screen. Heather is here. Yes. Right, that's your friend. I was gonna ask you her name, and then she she. You know, posted she likes to buy new old stock from her local mission. Okay, I'm getting it up on my phone. Okay, so Heather, nice to meet you. What, what kind of th when you're talking about? I mean, I don't want you to give away the, uh, you know, your secrets. But what what type of things you're buying? Are you buying like um, toys or electronics or clothing or what, what what type of things are you buying at your uh, your mission? Um, so what I've kind of been buying, I go to the Goodwill outlet, aka the bins, mm -hmm. a lot. Um. One of my specialties is toys. I've been reselling vintage toys and newer toys for, gosh, years now. Um, I used to sell a lot at the uh, kids' consignment uh, sales that would happen all over the yeah, United I, States. Yeah, I've seen videos about that where people have done that. And it, it, yeah, I don't know. How, how was your experience with that? I know it can be hit or miss. Um, I well, 
during my peak, I sold around 4,000 items in one sale. Wow. So I would make thousands of dollars in one season. Um, but it's a lot of work. I kind of got burnt down on it because I had been doing it for, you know, gosh, I don't know how many years, over six years. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I still, I still collect the toys. Um, they do well online. So I mostly have been getting jewelry, kids' clothes, women's clothes, a little bit of men's clothes, toys, uh, antiques, uh, collectibles, vintage decor, books. Actually, it's a kind of a lot, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> vintage, vintage kids' books, newer books. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. Well, I, pretty much everything. I'm still sourcing for everything. Well, yeah, well, well, that's the thing too. So, uh, like, like we mentioned earlier, you, you do one offs, but um, do you have anything you prefer to sell? I mean, like I said, things that you're interested in. Obviously, I mean, are you interested in fashion or antiques or what? what what's um, your, your passion? Well, my favorite things to sell are books, kids' toys, and jewelry. I mean, okay. Totally different things. Sure, that's, that's, fine. Kind of, that's fine. Yeah, I'm kind of getting burnt out on selling clothes because I've. I've sold clothes for so many years. I've <laughs> sold clothes for 20 years. That's what I started selling and, you know, kids clothes. And so I'm getting a little burnt out 20 years of selling clothes. It's kind of like I'm having more fun selling the toys and the jewelry and uh, the books and stuff like that. But um, I'm knowledgeable in all those areas. So I can always go back to it. Where do you sell your books? Do you, do you dabble with FBM or FBA or do you strictly sell it like on eBay, your books? Uh, mostly eBay. Um, I most I don't really know a lot about adult books and stuff. I mostly sell children's books. That's okay. my specialty. Gotcha. Okay. And not necessarily vintage children's books, newer children's books. Okay. Um, for example, I sell Goosebumps books um, on eBay and lots and stuff. Okay. And uh, that's one of the things I sell. And I also have a YouTube live book sales that I just started. Oh, okay, so you're doing that as well. Ago. Okay. Now, yeah. when you do those, are they buy it nows or are they auctions when you run those? Buy it nows. Buy it nows. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so you'll, you'll make a lot of books or whatever, and then you'll do a buy it now, and whoever, whatever system you use, whoever put type one or whatever in the chat first, they would get yes. the, the purchase. Some lots and some individuals. Um, so I'll get most of my books for a dollar or less, and then I'll sell right. the books anywhere from $2 to $8 each. Right. Or do lots of them. So I, you know, at least double my money on each book or, you know, quadruple. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's easier to list hard goods than it is clothing. Yeah. But, uh, you want to make a certain amount of, uh, I, I used to, well, I, he doesn't do videos anymore, but I used to file um, prof sales. Uh, yeah. And you used to always talk about VOT or value of time. Yes. Obviously you want to be productive when you're, when you're, when you're working around the schedule of your children, whether it be homeschooling or, yeah. you know, you know, taking care of your children or, you know, if you have to, you know, house cleaning or preparing yeah. or whatever, you have to set up your own kind of schedule. Yeah. Uh, you want to make the most out of that time that you have available and be the most profitable you can be. So. Exactly. Time is money. <laughs> exactly. And we all have the same amount of, you know, I forgot the yep. numbers are the same amount of minutes, same amount of hours, you know, in the course of yeah. the world, that's, that's something that, you know, you can't change it. it it's permanent. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Right. So we all have the same amount of hours and in, in amount of minutes in the week. So uh, I just want to ask you, like I said, uh, you said you had obviously gotten away with everything that's going on in the world. You've gotten away from the good wilds. Uh, you're starting to go back now, you said, into the uh, good wilds. Yeah, the Goodwill outlet. Yeah. So um, obviously, you know, during COVID, they shut down for right. um, several months. And then I was kind of leery about going to them and stuff. Uh, but now I'm going back to them probably, uh, I'm trying to hit them about a couple times a month. Okay. And, you know, I mask up, I put gloves on and stuff and, you know, sanitize and everything. And then I leave everything in my car so all the germs will die out. <laughs> for a few days right and um, so I'm, I'm going back to it and you know and that's one of the cheapest ways for me i live in the northwest and we don't have outdoor flea markets around here oh not at and all okay no there's hardly any i mean actually i don't think there's anything Even during the summer, I mean, they don't have them. okay they don't have them yeah and um like we had they're sort of like flea markets that are indoor but they all got canceled you know because of True. what's happening now and stuff um so it's one of my only ways to really source right now, unless I go to a state sale 
or um, Goodwill Retail, but you know, Goodwill Retail stores are hit or miss. So I know sometimes it's difficult. How, how far are you? Uh, that's the typical question I ask other resellers. How far are you away from like local uh, thrift stores, or how far are you away from your Goodwill outlet, the bins? Um, Goodwill outlet. I'm about 20 minutes away from my oh, closest man. Goodwill outlet, but there is three Goodwill outlets less than an hour drive from me. Wow, that's yeah, extremely I know. unusual. Very unusual. I know it's crazy. Wow. Well, that's good for you. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I I typically don't go to the other Goodwill outlets anymore. Just my time is limited. Um, right. but I go to the closest one to me, which you know seems fine. Now, uh, not to get too personal, but the, your husband works a full time job and he, he works outside of the house. Yeah, so I so like to my mention. Concern to, is you even have to bring the children with you, right, to to the outlet, right? If you're gonna, um, well, or do you have somebody that can watch your children when you want to go to the outlets? I want to go to the outlet. He's like, okay, take the kid. Okay, Stephanie's freezing up a little bit. I'm sure she may have to come back in. Oh, here we are. Oh, there you are. You're back. Okay. Um, so I was saying, I joke with my husband because I said, I want to go to the Goodwill bins. And he says, well, okay, take the kids. And I said, what are you talking about? I'm leaving. <laughs> so, um, there, when my husband has the day off, I'll, you know, not sneak out, but right. I'll get the heck out go to the bins for a couple well, yeah, hours. Yeah, sure. It's probably a lot easier to, to go to the bins, but you don't have to worry about your children. And especially with everything that's going on now, you're worried about your yep. children, you know. Yeah, so I try to I try to work around that and stuff. Like if he has a day off, if he's not doing anything, I say, okay, I'm going to go for two hours. Um, so which is nice, you know. Um, I take the kids once in a blue moon, but they don't really like it. They get bored, and right. I can't concentrate. Well, that's the thing too. I mean, it, 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 from what I understand, they're not really at that age. You're going to play with like little toys. If you have like like, no. a, and the thing is, if you have a six or seven year old, you obviously you want them like arms length away from you. Yeah. You know, your kids are a little bit older, but I mean. Yeah. Obviously, with everything that's going on this way, you still want to keep track of what they're doing. So, how exactly. are you going to concentrate on digging through bins when yeah. you have to worry about your children, make sure they're safe and you know they're not whatever? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're good kids, but obviously, you got to keep an eye yeah. on your children, make sure they're not. <laughs> they're, you know, they're I know good kids, sister, but... a, 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 a boy and a girl, right? What? A boy, two boys. Oh, two boys. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Siblings are going to fight too. So, I mean, oh, yeah. Know, maybe they found a toy and they're, they're fighting over the toy. You're going to worry about that as opposed to you know, doing your business and digging through the bins. That happens more than I would like to say. It's quite embarrassing. And I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> like, please stop. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I always like to mention to people like um, the money I make from all this is not full time money. Cause I know there's channels out there that teach people how to make money reselling, you know, for full time money. And, right. and I always like to mention, okay, these sales I'm making is just my, Part time money that helps with my family's, you know, fun stuff, expenses like right. If you're going on vacation or something, yeah, contribute or if they want to go out to a nice dinner or something, right? Yeah. So I, I don't want people to think, well, that's not a lot of money. It's like, well, no, it's, it's not a ton of money. It's not something I can live off of. It's extra money. My husband has a full time job. Like, well, for for example, I I bought a whole trip a whole week long, actually more than a week trip for us to go to Hawaii. Wow. Um, and you paid the money I paid. Wow. Yes. That's but it got canceled because oh. of COVID. Okay. And they only gave me a credit. So okay. that will come later. But um, I also helped, you know, put a new roof on our house and stuff. So that was nice. So it's just, it's just money to help us, you know, help the family. Well, again, so, I, I tell you, I, I follow a lot of channels and I, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube over the, over the, the last, I, I've been in reselling probably for a little over four years now and, uh, uh, you know, watching the various sellers. And then there are people that, that make a full-time living doing uh, you know, reselling, but for the most part, they're full-time. There are people that basically make a full-time living doing reselling, but the reality, they're working two full-time jobs. Yeah. They're working their full-time job, their J-O-B, yeah. and they're also basically putting in 40, 50, 60 hours a week in the reselling. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot of work. It, but it's, absolutely, it's a lot of work, and you get what you put into it. Exactly. Especially yes. with eBay, we were talking earlier about the algorithms. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we're talking about YouTube algorithms, and uh, eBay has their Cassini, their algorithm. So, if you're not active with, with uh, eBay, uh, yeah. you're not going to sell anything because they just basically push you down into search rankings. I've so noticed that. On a regular basis, yes. I've noticed that because with me doing the YouTube live sales. 
Right. I, I'm not listing as much on eBay as I would like. Right. And um, I notice if I don't list, I hardly sell anything. So as soon as I list up, I'll sell a few things. But it's hard to manage the YouTube live sales because I have to invoice everyone. Everyone, Then I have to package everything. You know? yep. Yeah. And, and so that takes away from eBay. And sure. I don't want to burn myself out. So, you know. Right. Now, you, now you're also doing homeschooling as well. Are your children doing both? Oh, or are they just strictly homeschooling? Yeah, so um, I'm in Washington State. Um, right. It's completely virtual learning, okay. Um, okay. nothing uh, in person. And so I have two kids. And so they, you know, they're doing their Zoom meetings, their virtual learning several hours okay. a day. And then they have more work they're supposed to do on their own. But, you know, if they need any help or questions, you know, I have to help them with that Treatment. stuff. Yeah, and they have a homework or whatever. Or, yeah. Yeah. So that takes out of my time. Sometimes I just say, wait till your dad gets home. Because I don't <laughs> yeah, you know. Like, well, the math. Well, I'm like, it's just a team approach to raising children, right? <laughs> just wait till your dad gets home. I'm busy. <laughs> I don't want right. a parent anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do, eh? Yep. Well, they used to say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, now it's not so much anymore, especially with what's going on there. You know, your villages yeah. aren't bother raising children. But yeah, it, it takes more than one parent. I mean, and unfortunately, there are some situations where people are single parents, and it makes it difficult. Oh, um, I, there, are, there are some people that work were working, yeah. and uh, their children were going to daycare, they're going to school, yeah. and now they can't go to daycare, or they can't go to school. So that puts them in a really tough situation. Yeah, I actually feel really lucky that I have flexible hours with what I do for money and stuff, and um, that I have my husband. Right. To help, he actually works right. a lot of overtime, so I am okay. by myself a lot of the times. But right. um, you know, I don't know. I feel I feel lucky to have the support, you know, and yeah, um, sure. that I don't have a nine to nine to five job, you know. Even though, absolutely, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you so something. Seen... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm just seeing a couple people that I know, so. You're welcome. You're welcome. We can we can take a, like a thirty minute break and you can say hello to our, not thirty minute thirty seconds. Oh, 30, 30, 30, 30 minutes. <laughs> thirty seconds. Yeah, Marrakesh Seven. Marrakesh Seven's from Seattle. He's in Washington too. Okay, and uh, I think you know Moreto. Uh, I know Heather. I'm not seeing that. Okay, that's fine. And then we have Bill from No Man of Frog is in the chat. Oh, okay. Um, Hi guys. Just, just, just a reminder, guys. Uh, if you're new to my channel, or, or if you're not new to my channel, or vice versa, <laughs> just a reminder that uh, our show that I do with Bill next Monday is going to be on Bill's channel, No Man a Fraud. So we do a bi-weekly uh, show, and it'll be on Bill's channel next Monday. So look for the notification if you're not subscribed to Mr. Bill No Man a Frogs. Please do so. So that'll be next Monday. So okay, uh, I'm going to ask you the typical, you know. YouTube reseller okay. interview questions. Okay. Get a little prep on it so you would know what's coming. Okay. Uh, do you offer free shipping? Yes. <laughs> I offer free shipping. And it just, I, I, I see it was easier for me to offer free shipping. I used to not a couple of years ago. And now I almost 99.9%. .9%, I know there's controversy <laughs> with that. Some people's like, don't do free shipping. You know, you should always add shipping. But, for me, I don't know if it's the best way or not, but for me, it was just easier. Um, I would get questions when I put plus shipping, people like, why is the shipping so much? Or can you go lower on the shipping? Now I just, I just, I put, put it into in the, the price in of the item. Absolutely. And I like never I, I, get I, questions. <laughs> I did a video the other day and I said, there is no such thing as free shipping. Yeah. <laughs> we all know yeah, you exactly. the, end of the price of whatever you're asking. And again, yeah. if you have best offer, which I'm going to ask you about, uh, if you have best offer on something, you got to build a little bit of cushion on that for the best yeah. offer. And again, if you're offering free shipping, like I said, there is no free shipping. So you're building in the cost of your shipping. And I yeah. always tell people, don't forget, you're paying commission on that shipping too. Yeah. But if your shipping is something that costs you $10, $15, you could be yeah. paying another dollar and a half, two dollars in between eBay fees and PayPal fees or managed payment fees. So just keep that in mind, guys. I mean, some people don't mind losing a little bit, but I want to basically break even on my shipping. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. 
So I always joke around that I, I, I tell people, you know, I'm right outside of Philadelphia. So I punch in, uh, when I when I calculate my shipping, I punch in 90210 for the area code because that's Beverly uh-huh. Hills. So back in the day right. when the show was 90210, you know, Beverly Hills 90210, it's like, yeah. well, I don't know if I ship to Beverly Hills, that's across the country. So now that yeah. even first class now is based on weight plus distance. Yeah. So I punch in the 90210. So nice. I use that, so that's kind of I get the idea what what my shipping will cost me, and then I I typically do flat rate or I do free shipping. Uh, I figure out well, it's going to cost me five dollars to ship it to California, so I'll charge yeah. you know, four ninety five or you know well, I was like, like I told you before I factor in the cost of the the fees, so maybe yes. I'll make you know like uh, you know five ninety five or something to cover my my cost. Uh, yeah. I'll do a flat rate; it's just easier for me than you know worrying about it. And then uh, I do that's flat rate. Work for me. I do flat rate sometimes too because it it seems to be a better deal than you know. Right. Uh, two things where we're on shipping. Uh, I did mention to you before you have started using Pirate Ship. So again, I know a lot of people are more familiar than I am with Pirate Ship, but uh, I was just I told you guys I try to keep up with the ch- various reseller chats and YouTube uh-huh. channels and you know reselling blogs. Uh, try to pass along that information to you. Uh, that reminds me, guys, if you aren't subscribed to my Facebook group. That's an, uh, an outlet for you guys to share information. Uh, Sharon's been posting a link, and it's also in my description below. Uh, and while I'm thinking about it, Stephanie is her link for her YouTube channel uh, and her Instagram are also in the description below. So uh, that's an opportunity. One thing I wanted to bring where if you guys weren't aware of, there's been an issue with shipping on eBay's platform. It's been defaulting to priority shipping. Yes. So you got to be very careful. Um if you're if you're going to ship something and you're very busy, you're doing a bunch of shipping. You might have offered you know free shipping. Just say it's first class, and you offered free shipping, yeah. and then eBay will default by mistake to priority shipping. So be yeah. very careful. And my understanding is they haven't worked out that that uh, glitch yet. So I've noticed that too. I really have to pay attention and focus. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's something that happens. And like, like I said, if I see something, guys, that that's, I feel that's pertinent to you guys. I'll make sure I include it in the Facebook group. Uh, yeah. Typically, that's where I post it, and I'll post it on my personal page, or I'll post it on my my business page. But I will post it in the Facebook group. So if you, if you know, it doesn't cost you anything. It's free to join. So yeah. <laughs> that's an opportunity. So uh, so we talked about you do offer free shipping. You do use Pirate Ship. Uh, that you're gonna have somebody on that's an expert on cubic shipping because I'm not. But you can save a lot I'm of not money. Oh, you save God. a lot of money. Uh, they also have something called export rate with Pirate Ship. So it'll be a lot less expensive to ship through Pirate Ship internationally than it is to uh, ship it on your own directly. Okay. It's a lot more money sometimes if the person uses the global shipping network through uh, the yeah. program, I should say, through uh, eBay. It could be a lot more money. So um, yeah. that's something to look into. I saw a post earlier on one of my Facebook friends, resellers, that she said it was like $15 for her to ship it uh, through eBay's shipping. Yeah. And she paid like eight dollars for pirate ship. She used the export rate. Oh my gosh! I mean, seven dollars is seven dollars. I mean, it, you know, it yeah, adds up. yeah, it does. That's Ooh. a big difference. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I told you, going to ask you, do you offer, uh, do you run sales? Do you run sales on your store periodically? Um, I don't. I, I've never ran a sale. Okay. Um, the the thing that I like, what I like, um. I don't know if it's fairly new, um, but I have, you know, set prices and off if someone's interested offering them a deal, you know, um, so you, you, have, say, you, hey, you do offers to watchers. Yes, I do offers to watchers. And I do that almost every single day continually. Um, I, you get, I you like get in that, that habit of doing it at a certain time every day and that's getting that, yep. that you know, that, the memory, you know, get that clicked in. Okay. Every day at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to do yeah. check my watchers. I'm going to send offers to watchers. I do. I do that every day. I kind of like, that. I feel more in control of that. If I, yeah. I don't like the whole, you know, my, oh, my whole store is on sale because I don't want everything to be on sale, you know, because like sometimes like this is a good price. It shouldn't be on sale. Right. I'll, I'll let it sit for a while. So um, I, I like to play around with the, the, um, you know, giving them a, whatever offer and stuff of how much I, and plus it helps me to stay in control because some things, you know, I can go 20% lower and some things I can only go, you know, maybe 10% lower and stuff. So, um, 
That's I was talking it. about that's running it. sales and also oh, really? it will also help offer, sales. offer to watchers. I mean, that's that's been a game changer. I know, I know Special for yeah. Billy does very well with that. And like I said, a lot of resellers have like a set schedule. They know it's like at such, yep. such time I'm going to do this, such time I'm going to do this. So they schedule that or, you know, if they have a, uh, you know, a, a to-do list or whatever, they have a certain time where they say, okay, from uh, Bill says uh, between 8 and 9 a.m. he sends out uh, offers to watchers. And I finally it's a game check- changer for a lot of, a lot of uh, resellers. I check- five or six times a day. Actually. Okay. So you check it five, six times a day. Okay. Yep. And as soon as someone's interested, I offer, I offer to them. Some people don't typically like that because they're like, well, this is cheap enough. I don't need to offer them less, but it, you know, sometimes it's just psychological. If you just give them like a 10% discount, it might be like, Oh, you know, Hey, I'm getting a deal, you know, just for me. So yeah, people are looking for a deal. Absolutely. Like I said, I know some of my reseller friends do very, very well with it. Um, and obviously, the, the more listings you have and the more activity you do, yeah. the more volume you're going to do. Uh, that's another issue with uh, Cassini. It likes activity. So like I said, in yeah. one of my shows earlier, it's like, well, if you have offers to watchers, so you send it out an offer to a watcher, and then they respond and you respond back, that's activity yeah. that eBay likes, the Cassini likes. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, is if you have best offers, if somebody makes you an offer, Yes. Uh, even if it's a low ball offer, always respond. I mean, yeah. let, let's say you have something listed for fifty dollars and they offer you twenty dollars. Yeah, just don't dismiss it out of hand or don't have auto refusal. Yeah, so you can you can counter it like forty dollars or forty five dollars. But eBay likes that activity, and again, that helps you with the search ranking. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, and I I, I do uh, set it up where I will accept offers. Now I have. Just on principle, I have declined some people that have insulted me with their offers. Well, that's <laughs> on principle. And I was like, I got you. you know I'm, I'm the same way, but you know, it's business is business. So you just sometimes just gotta say, Oh, that guy's a, I'm gonna clean up, he's just a jerk. He's a <laughs> jerk. I'm, I'm decline. Counter, right. It's the equivalent of like slamming the phone down on someone, mm-hmm. you know. So you can't do that because we have cell phones. So it's equivalent of slamming the phone on someone. I'm like, you know what? Decline. <laughs> Don't offer me that. It's horrible. Yeah. Well, that's like when, when I go to these uh, these yard sales and these garage sales. I don't I don't really lowball people. I know people to do it. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna call guys. I'm gonna mute myself for one second here. Okay. My allergies. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I don't I don't really lowball people. I mean, I'll make people offer. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do a video. I'm going to try to get a video together. I, I told people, um, build this in the chat and, uh, Beth, my friend, Beth, uh, they do a lot with parts, uh, appliance parts. So I'm oh, trying to learn, wow. learn that little niche. Um, so somebody has a couple things listed and, uh, you know, I picked up a good deal on a couple of appliances and then they had, they, 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 they had very fair prices on these things. I don't, I don't want to yeah. give away the, the secret cause I want to put it in my video what I paid for yeah. them. I, I got a very good price, but then they were selling some Legos and they were like, I said, oh. And the thing was, it was like a community art sale. So I was pulling out of the development. It's like, ah, shoot, there's another sale at the end here. And luckily, I was able to park like in a, like in a business parking lot. It was like 8 yeah. o'clock in the morning. So it wasn't an issue. So I parked in there, and I, I walked over, and I, I left my phone in my car because I was charging it. Like, oh, geez, oh, I'm going to figure out prices if I don't have my phone. <laughs> so, oh, no. So the woman had these prices on her on her things, and they were, uh, you know, we talked about earlier about uh, new old stock. Yeah. You know, it, it was basically Legos, new in the box, but they were they were old. But they were new in the box, never opened. Uh, and the prices that she were asking, it's like that sounds like retail. So I yeah. said, I'll tell you what. I said, I'll go to my car. I have my phone in my car. I'll check. I said, it sounds like they're kind of close to retail. I said, but if they're, if I can, I'm a reseller, I, I'm honest with people. Some people yeah. won't tell people. I tell them. I said, look, uh, you know, I, I, I work part time as a reseller. I have some health issues, but um, you know, I'll, if I can make you a deal, I'll come back and I'll make you an offer. You know, and maybe maybe we'll be able to work something out. So yeah. the one thing she wanted fifteen dollars for it, and that's what it was selling on eBay for exactly for fifteen dollars, oh, you know, plus shipping. The other thing she had it for thirty dollars, and but that was selling for like fifty dollars plus shipping or sixty dollars yeah. including shipping. Yeah. So I, I so I should have offered her. Did I offer thirty or did she want four? Yeah, I offered. That's right. I offered her twenty. I said I okay. should have offered her fifteen, but I didn't want a low baller. Yeah. But I offered her twenty, so I figured, hey, if I can sell it for fifty. You know, less fees. I'm I'm more than doubling my money, so I'm gonna there make at go. least twenty dollars on it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not. I know some people go in there like they. Some people be asking like you know, fifty dollars or something. I'll offer them like twenty dollars. It's like no, you can't do that. I mean, you can do it. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't. I I don't have the courage to do that. You know, like I'll offer less, 
And, um, but I just don't have the courage to lowball people. I, I don't know. I'd be scared. <laughs> I wouldn't want the confrontation. <laughs> There's Mr. Pat D's. Hello, hello, Mr. Pat. I was talking about you earlier with Stephanie and then tell you that you're, you're my neighbor about two to, two to three hours north of me in Pennsylvania. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah. So I mean, that was saying, so you do offer, you do, you don't really do best offers, but you do offers to watchers. Um, you, uh, how about free returns? That's, I know that's kind of like a taboo thing, but some people do offer free uh, returns. Now, yeah, this has been controversial. I've had this argument with people. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so on my, so there is an option on your eBay page that says, do you offer returns? That that's the option. I click no returns. Oh, you have so no you, returns. I just like no, no returns. free returns. You have no returns. No well, returns. Well, so, you know that's 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 the fallacy, right? Yeah. On eBay. There so, is no such thing as no returns. <laughs> that that has been the controversy. People was like, well, there's no such thing. I was like, well, I click it on there, no returns. Now, if someone wants to, okay, if, if something's wrong with the product or uh, there's a tear in the clothing that I didn't, you know, see or anything. Um, I'll, I'll just refund them or, you know, they can return it. They never do. Right. Um, now sometimes they'll say, Oh, this is not exactly what I wanted. I said, well, you're, you're uh, free to resell it. You know, I say no returns. Now they can either say, Oh, okay. I didn't see no returns. Okay. I'll keep it. Or they can, contact eBay and go through eBay, then eBay will decide if I have to return it or not. So eBay can force me, you know, to return it. Yeah. So at first I, I, I will tell them, well, I say no returns, blah, blah, blah. You know, most of the time they won't return it. They'll just say, oh, okay, never mind. I'll resell or I'll give it to a friend. But sometimes they'll say, well, no, I'm, you know, I'm going to contact eBay. I say, okay, that's fine. So probably 95% of the time they don't return anything because <laughs> I, I make it seem like it's going to be difficult for them. <laughs> right. I know that might not be the most, that might be, I don't know, the smartest thing to do, but I'm just like, oh, I'm not Amazon. You know, it's, it's hard for me and stuff. And just because they're like, well, I've, I decided not to, you know, I don't want this item anymore. And Amazon makes it really easy. I'm like, and, you know, just a part-time reseller and, um, it's, you know, I'm not Amazon. It's hard for me. So that's, well, that's kind of where I stand I mean, on it. You know, I talk about uh, Amazon being the 600 pound gorilla and, um, there's pluses and minuses to, uh, Amazon. Yeah. I was typically, they get more money for their items that listed on there, but they are extremely strict with their policies and they they don't have a lot of leeway and it's difficult for sellers that they have issues to get a hold of anybody like a live person. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very difficult. So once you answer, was it Heather? Is that who plus one is? Heather, is Heather? yes. Once you answer her question, I'm going to get back to something else. Once you answer her question. If you, if you could thrift anywhere, where would you go? Oh, my gosh. Well, if I could travel, <laughs> there wasn't a pandemic right now. I would love, I've been to Paris, and the flea markets there are just so fun and so huge. So if I could thrift anywhere, I would love to take a trip to Paris and just spend the whole day shopping their flea markets. Okay. So, gonna, yeah, gonna, that would ask, be my dream. I'm going to ask you a question, and this, this <laughs> is probably out of bounds. <laughs> what? what do they call flea markets in, in French? What, do you know what, what they call them? I don't know. I was, I was just curious. I'll have, have to Google that. You know, Google's your friend. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> I don't Probably think they. I don't think they call market. a flea market in French. <laughs> Probably like an open, open yeah, right. air market or something like, like that. They call like like in uh, like the United Kingdom, like like Scotland and Ireland, Northern Ireland. They call them boot sales. Are you familiar with what boot sales are? Oh, really? I didn't know that. What they do is they pull their cars up into like an open field. Oh. And they, they back your car in, and and uh, in the UK, basically in Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland, a trunk of a car is called a boot. Oh, so they open up their trunk and then they set up a table or something behind it, and yeah. it's called a boot sale because they're basically they're kind of sort of selling out of the trunk of their car, yeah. which they call a boot. Oh, that's interesting. You see, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's well, funny. You learn, I tell people you learn something new. It's, it's a good day every day. You learn something new. It's a good day. Exactly. <laughs> all, exactly always right. learning. Uh, the other thing is, I don't understand why they call them flea markets or swap meets. Huh. 
because it's oh, like, yeah, well, meets. why would you call something a flea market? I mean, don't, people don't want fleas. Yeah, and, and it's swap, you're not really swapping. You're buying things that are on sale. I guess. I guess you're buying person's stuff and they're swapping it out for to you. I don't know. I never understood what they call it swap meets or, or flea markets, but I have to Google that. Google exactly. the meaning different names and stuff okay. <laughs> okay uh okay so you don't you don't even offer returns at all so obviously you don't offer free returns uh yeah, i don't your... offer returns but you know i'm okay, sometimes that's... forced to well that was the other thing i wanted to bring up and uh, i wanted to make sure we addressed heather's question uh, before i forgot to ask you um yeah car boots for sale exactly uh i wanted to ask you uh, as far as what was my question i was going to ask you with shipping. Oh, I want to bring it up, guys. Again, I, again, I told you earlier, I follow some of these reselling groups and different things. Uh, and there's been an issue with people call eBay uh, for things that we're talking about returns. And basically, eBay tells them how to work the system. They tell buyers to say that item was not as described or, or, or something was, was misrepresented. Yeah. And that's wrong. I mean, if, if, if something doesn't fit the person, they tell they tell them... That it doesn't fit, yeah. That's not a reason for return. Yeah. Now, obviously, you know, buyers are, are smart enough to work the system. They'll say, "Oh, well, the color isn't right," or, or uh, you know, it has this little tear, and then disclose this little tear. And but eBay, is, you know, customer service reps have been telling them how to work the system to get get free returns. Um, there has been one situation where I I was right and I stuck to my guns with eBay. Right. So this lady said that the inside of the wallet was dirty. So, and I said, what are you talking about? So she actually turned in the complaint to eBay. She wanted um, her money back. She didn't say a return. She wanted her money back. And so I contested it and I said, no, I have pictures that I posted. So I sent eBay the pictures that I posted. I said, see, it's not dirty. And they sided with me. Oh, good. And yeah. And they said, Happens, it, happens, it really happens, but it does happen occasionally. <laughs> yeah, so usually so, they side with the buyer once in a blue moon. They'll side with both sides, and then really once in a very, very blue moon, they'll yeah. side with the seller. But it is what exactly. it is. I mean, it's a cost of doing business. If you if you do business on these platforms, you know what what the rules are, and just have yeah. the on your cost of doing business. Oh my gosh, I know he's talking. <laughs> okay, does okay. So he follows your channel. And there's something that you that you say yeah. on your channel. <laughs> what is that? Can you ask what reselling terminology is? <laughs> um, the term, okay. I've talked about this in my chat several times. The term I hate that resellers use is honey hole. <laughs> the, the resellers, they, they call their favorite thrift store or place they thrift at, they call it their honey hole. <laughs> And I okay. can't stand that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to me, it just sounds disgusting. And every time I hear it, I'm just like, oh my God, stop saying honey hole. <laughs> well, good thing I didn't say that to you because I do say that sometimes. It's like, no, I say, no. don't give away your bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, honey hole. I, I, I used to say like secret sauce. I guess you prefer secret sauce as opposed to the other, the other words. Oh, no, not secret <laughs> sauce either. You don't like secret sauce either? All right. Secret sauce, honey hole, they all have like, I don't know, weird. Well, secret sauce could know. be a topping, could be like a condiment. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just can't stand that. <laughs> oh, God. My dog. Yeah, go, go watch dog there. What's he, Shepherd? Uh, it's a gold. It's not. It's a um, collie. He looks like last. I was saying, that's not a golden bark. I know golden. Yeah, that is not God. a golden bark. <laughs> that's why I love goldens. They're, they're big, but they're like a wolf, wolf. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Sorry, that's the door, a, wolf, wolf. <laughs> he has a high-pitched bark. It's so yeah. obnoxious. Yeah. Collies are very vocal. That's fine. I mean, if that's, that's what you like, I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah, when you say gold, it's like, that's not a golden spark. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what am I talking about? I don't know my dog. <laughs> death that's death piles, another one, death piles, I guess you don't like? Uh, I actually didn't even know what a death pile was until I started my YouTube channel, and I asked yeah, death piles. I asked someone what a death pile was because I'm old school. We never said death pile back in the day. And she's like, are you kidding? And I said, I no, I don't know what a death pile is. So even my mom, she was like, what is a death pile? And I said, well, I guess it's a term the youngins use now. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I, what? so yeah, that's a term that 
I'm just learning about. Oh, well, I learned high, years high, ago. High cost is money piles, and uh, Bill has a has a weird. He has like a three term uh, name for it. He calls it like future profit opportunities or something. But oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, something in fact, you know, get it out of the negative a death pile and make it like it's like Pat says a cash pile or or future money. future profit pile or, or something that effect. Money pile, yeah. Money pile. There you go. I like that. <laughs> I like. Well, I don't know if I like the word pile. Pile sounds weird. But like right. money, money stash or money mound. No, not money, money mound. <laughs> <laughs> mound of future money. <laughs> I'm just throwing words out now. Right. Okay. I got. I told you I would ask you this. Did, hopefully, you came up with something. Okay. What, what, what was did. your best flip? You come up with something. It's not my best all-time flip, but it was right. a really good flip. Um, I don't typically. Like I only look through men's t-shirts if I have the time. I typically mm -hmm. don't have the time because it takes a while to get through the whole rack. Right. But I found an, 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 an I guess maybe considered vintage now. I'm not sure, but it's years old is vintage now. Yeah, the, the song from 2000, it believe it or not, is considered vintage. Uh, so maybe it was close to vintage. It was an M and M, uh, you know, Slim Shady t-shirt uh okay. back in his early days concert t-shirt it was a little bit faded found it in the men's t-shirt i can't remember what i paid it was like five bucks or something bill prices i sold on ebay i think this was a while ago i think it was for like 75 bucks okay so well, i turned that, five dollars right 75 is sold within a couple weeks and i was like wow that was a good flip and um i typically don't find t-shirts that are worth a lot at Goodwill anymore. They pull a lot of that stuff and someone just must have missed it or something or didn't know who he was because I got really lucky with that. There you go. Future income pile. <laughs> it, I need to tell my husband that because he was like, there's so much stuff here. You know, Wait, huh, that's a future that. income pile. <laughs> like, it's not stuff. Yeah, it's future income pile. So right. don't complain because this pile exactly. is going to send us to Hawaii. <laughs> Exactly. Right. <laughs> I like. Do you like vacations? Okay, then I gotta Everybody get likes more vacations, stuff. Right? Absolutely. Oh. Okay. Uh, the other thing was I uh, talked to you pre-chatters. Are, are there any apps? I mean, I mean, we all use the same kind of apps or things. Are there any websites or apps that you did, that you use maybe like different or you maybe things that you found useful that, that maybe other resellers aren't using? Did you come up with anything? Um, Gosh, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty basic and old okay. school. I don't really know any apps. Um, if anyone tells me about apps and stuff, I, I definitely research it and stuff. But I mean, I mean, I literally just found pirate ship. I was, I was gonna mention you learned about pirate ship a few months ago, right? A few months ago, I didn't know. I, I was like, I was like, what do you, you know, ship with? And a pirate ship. So I looked that up. Um, but, you know, in Instagram, I mostly started getting into Instagram just maybe a year, year and a half ago. So Instagram was new to me because I was mostly on Facebook. I'm trying to get away from Facebook. But yeah, um, that's and then the thing that I found with Facebook is um, it's typically for older people, which is fine. I mean, I have yeah. a lot of, believe me, I love my, my viewers and my followers. Um, but typically, Facebook is an older platform. So I'm trying to get so many people are just yeah. trying, trying to get into reselling, you know, maybe in their, their 30s and 40s or whatever, looking for, you know. Yeah. You know, additional income or whatever, or, or for whatever reason, with everything that's happening, maybe they they're forced to the find a side yeah. job or whatever. So, okay, so that that's good. Uh, again, the other thing too with pirate shipping, guys, I, I mentioned to you. That I'm sure most of you are aware of your experienced resellers, uh, but you tie you can tie a credit card to your account. Don't tie it yes. down, but I tie a credit card, so you either earn miles or you earn cash back. Uh, I have a, a cash back credit card tied to my pirate ship. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is if you don't do a lot of volume on eBay uh, and you don't, well, first of all, if you don't do enough volume, you're not going to get top rated. If you don't offer, do a lot of volume and offer free returns, you're not going to get top rated plus. So you're yeah. not going to get the discounts on shipping typically from eBay. So what I do is yeah. I check eBay shipping cost and then I have the uh, pirate ship sync with my um, eBay platform. And then okay. I have, a, like I said, a credit card with money back tied to it. So yeah. I'll check it on pirate ship and typically pirate ship is the same or uh, it's less money. So I, so I use pirate ship. Uh, so basically what you're getting is you're getting top rated plus it's like, like a commercial rate you're getting on pirate ship oh, from, uh -huh. from item one. You don't have to be a high wow. volume user. You get it from item one. So again, oh, so you're trying, yeah, so that's, that's, that's why I like to use pirate ship. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm still playing around with pirate ship too, you know, 
And uh, so, yeah, definitely anything that anything that saves money. <laughs> well, like I said, I, I'm really trying to find some of that's that's like really super experienced with the cubic shipping. Uh, uh, and preferably somebody that does the export rate because, uh, I mean, certain countries, there's, there's typical that issues. I mean, I know there's some countries you don't want to ship to because their personal service is terrible or the customs is terrible or for whatever reason, there's 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 issues with people getting their their, their product. I mean, you know, the, there's, you know, illegal stuff going on. People like yeah. steal packages and stuff. So certain countries you definitely want to avoid. But if, if it's, yeah. you know, relatively no issues, I don't see why we c couldn't use pirate ship, you know, the export rates, yeah. you know, the money. And you know USPS just raised their rates uh, a couple days ago. October eighteenth, right? Yeah, so that's kind that's, of a yeah, that's, that's always fun. So uh, uh, one of my former uh, managers always says, "It is what it is." So you know, it, it is what it is. Nothing you, you can do about it. Oh, exactly. It, it is what it is, and you, you can't fight it. it, it you know. Uh, but we oh. had discussed this before. Most of the people in the chat obviously know about your sale treasure map. Uh, something people don't know, and, and I was it's kind of surprised that people don't realize that you can route between stops on your sale treasure map. Some people don't know that. I mean, for the most part, people do know that. But yeah. you know, when you you know pick one, two, three, whatever, so you go you know travel to one, you put ways yeah. in or Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever, and travel your first stop, and then you can have it route you to the next one, and you know just keep keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Yeah. So I mean, some people aren't aware of that, so that's why I like to bring up when people bring up your sale treasure map. Uh, I've actually you. never used yard sale treasure map. Okay. <laughs> I I have never used it. Um, I typically will do Craigslist, look up on Craigslist and a state sale finder. I'll do that site. And then I've actually had some luck just following signs from people that don't. Really? So you just drive around have... like the, the highway or your neighborhood or whatever, you look for signs. Yeah. I'll go and, um, a bigger city, you know, than my, or like a kind of fancier neighborhood. And I'll just follow the signs. And some of those sales, they don't advertise online at all. They'll just put signs up or if an old, it's an older okay. person. Okay. They just, and I've actually had pretty good luck um, with those. Because they weren't advertised. You just saw the signs and you were, yeah. Yeah. And they were just like, oh, yeah. So there's like, a tip. There's a tip. That's a pro tip, as I like to call them, as Chris, the thrift shop hustler, used to say, or still says. Pro tip. Yeah. <laughs> I just take my kids. Most of the time, I have to take my kids when I do the garage selling and stuff. And I was like, okay, look for signs. You know, we're just going to look for signs because I, I don't know. It's well, you, uh, you it's go grab a cup of coffee and I, I don't know if they're allowed to eat, you know, donuts or bagels or whatever. And then you oh, give yeah. a, a treat to eat and <laughs> bring along oh, with you. Food. Yeah, I can throw yeah. food like snacks. I'm like, okay, right. and they're old enough; they just stay in the car, you know, right. half the time. <laughs> right. Okay, so. I think that was about all my questions. I'm going to see if there are any questions in the chat, guys. And again, if you have any questions uh, for Stephanie uh, or myself, you know, and you're watching the replay, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, like I tell you guys, I'm, I'm very conscientious about making sure I follow up on any questions and any comments on my channel. Um, I also want to remind you guys, if you haven't clicked on the thumbs up, please click on the thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and make sure you click on the uh, on notifications bell. So were there any questions for Stephanie while we have fortunate to have Stephanie on? Higher priced homes. Always Google higher priced homes before flea market. Right. Bill, uh, Bill and I, we talk, you know, off offline and uh, he and I were discussing things I told you about the parts. Um, and he said, that's something I should consider going into higher income areas when I'm doing my uh, yard sales. Yeah. Because like I said, I told you guys, I'm in New Jersey right outside of Philadelphia and the, there's, there's still a lot of issues going on with what's going on in this world. And, uh, yeah. there's not a lot of yard sales or, or, or garage sales anymore. So, uh, Bill kind of said, like, again, I talked about your value of your time. So, okay. Maybe I'm better off going into more uh, exclusive neighborhoods, you know, with their higher income levels as opposed yeah. to just local sales. And that made sense. So that's why yeah. I actually got two of my um, appliances in, in like a higher income area. So the people, they were nice appliances and the people were just basically upgraded. Uh, you know, I, I find the typical yard sale stuff around here is, you know, what, you know, you normally find, you know, old, old glassware and uh, yeah. children's clothing and, you know, uh, you know, that type of stuff. But um, some people do very well. I mean, I, I know Sharon yeah. is in the chat was extremely well with the yard sales around her, but uh, you know, where she is, they, they're having a lot, a lot of yard sales. So um, not nice. so much here anymore. So she does very well. So were there any other questions? Oh, Donatella is here. Look at that. Donatella Bartolino. Again, oh, uh, yeah. 
we were going to talk about that reminded me i was going to want to talk about your youtube auctions and of course donatella is the queen of youtube auctions yeah so. I, i've been to sales <laughs> so someone asked if i find vintage nike or sorel because i live um in the state are close to where they have their headquarters yes um so you know google's kind of caught i'm mean, not google goodwill has kind of caught on to right. vintage nike and sorel and stuff okay. so a lot of that stuff won't be at goodwill retails anymore um and you don't find you don't find it a lot at a uh, goodwill bins as much so like 15 to 20 years ago i found vintage nikes you know sorels all that kind of stuff a lot of the times because they didn't know but now they're catching on. So um, even though I live, you know, ahead, I'll see a lot of Nike, but not like the valuable kind of Nike stuff. Right. Um, they'll they'll pull it or they'll price it really high. So Goodwill's kind of caught on. Um, at people's sales, they typically, you know, see Nike as ooh high end and stuff, and uh, they'll price it pretty high. So um, it, it's it's harder, even though I live with close to the headquarters i heard they used to do uh, like employee sales and if you knew somebody that was an employee yeah. sometimes you get in that way and buy things yeah they still, they yeah still have that i guess well with everything's going on they don't do that anymore but yeah was that an opportunity if you knew somebody that works there to go in on the employee sale um i yeah if i knew someone <laughs> no one's ever invited I don't know anybody. Me. okay all right <laughs> i don't know anyone <laughs> <laughs> or no, or if I know someone that works there, they've never invited me to go to their employee okay. store. Okay, well, Trying to give you a pro tip there, Stephanie. I know. <laughs> I, I had I heard that. To, I mean, that's the workaround. I need new friends. I need to branch out. There you go. You branch out. Okay, guys. Like I said, we're, we'll see if there are any last questions. And like I said, we're going to wrap it up. I'm so glad that some of the people that I, that I know I haven't seen for a while. So good to see Donatella and uh, see Mr. You Do It in the chat and see uh, Pat D's in the chat. All my uh, friends on the internet that are popping in. It's so great to see you guys. I really appreciate you popping in. Um, were there any other last minute questions for Miss Stephanie before we uh, lose the honor of having her on in our chat? And we can ask her any questions about her, uh, about her, you know, or about her reselling business, basically. Uh, let me ask this is a personal thing uh, as far as your um, homeschooling. Uh, uh -huh. You say your, your children are at the age now where they kind of do it on their own, they do Zoom meetings and stuff, but. Uh, with you running a business and everything, um, how much would you say you you takes you per day? Let's say a typical day uh, with the homeschooling. Do you have to get actively involved with when you have a? I think it's a ten and twelve year old. I think told me. Yeah, um, yeah. So with them, um, it, they'll they'll be in their Zoom meetings from gosh eight till about eleven thirty. Okay. So and then you know they're pretty much on their own unless they're having technical difficulties. And then usually for, gosh, it can be an hour to two hours in the afternoon, they'll need help and stuff. Um, sometimes several hours because they need a lot of help, like if stuff they don't understand. So it does cut into my time. But right. the times I'm avail I'm able to like list on eBay or to work on invoices when they're in Zoom meetings or like at in the evening when they're all done with school, you know, take uh, time, you know to do all that. So it's easier because they're older, you know, with younger kids, with parents of younger kids, I always try to tell them, you know, make time. Like if you can get up an hour before they get up out of bed, list what just five things on eBay or something. You well, that's know? what I'd say, at least five items per day. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, you can, you can do it even with younger kids. Cause I did it. I've done it since they were, you know, infants and stuff, right. but, uh, well, they're taking their nap around. whenever they're younger. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I don't want to forget to ask you about your auctions. Uh, you, you have a, you have scheduled particular days. Is it Tuesdays that you do your auctions typically? Yeah. So now I have a set schedule. I didn't have it before. So every single Tuesday night, at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, I have a YouTube live sale, and it's typically like vintage decor. I'll have sometimes you know books, crafts, sometimes jewelry. Um, so, and I usually typically will have anywhere from 40 to 60 items for sale and it's not, um, like an auction. It's actually straight up prices. So everything oh, like has a, buy a set now. price. Mm -hmm. a buy it now. Yeah. And it's real easy and it's fun. Um, it's not like huge sales. I typically get anywhere from 40 to 60 people okay. and, um, everyone chats with each other. So it's, you know, it's a real good time and you get to buy stuff. <laughs> 
So you, you schedule them every Tuesday and uh, do you do additional like sales occasionally? You pop up like a pop-up sale or something? You just pretty much yes. just do that Tuesday. Yeah, I, I, if I'm in, if I have the time or if I'm in the mood, uh, I'll just do like pop-up sales. Like a um, couple weeks ago, I was up at 6 a.m. Pacific on a Friday and I did a pop-up sale of just kids, books, and jewelry. <laughs> Okay. It was a weird combination. I thought, hey, moms can buy jewelry for themselves and kids' books, you know, for their kids. So, yeah, if you are subscribed to my channel, you might see me 6 o'clock in the morning and be able to shop. Be well, drink that's, coffee. That's why you have to subscribe. And, again, Stephanie's uh, YouTube yes. channel and her Instagram are in the description below, guys. So if you aren't subscribed, uh, please consider subscribing to Stephanie. Okay? Thank you. All right, guys. So I guess that's it for the questions. I appreciate you all being here. And we shall see you the next time. Good All day, right. everybody. Thanks. Take Thank care. You. Bye.